it's, it feels like it should have been common sense to me, but I, for, I needed somebody to say it to me was just like, you need to treat your time like it's as valuable of a resource as your money. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Snyder, and this is the Product Boss Podcast. I've helped launch and grow thousands of product-based businesses, even one of my own. And over the last 20 years, I've seen behind the scenes of businesses just like yours. Whether they are makers, manufacturers, artists, or food and beverage businesses, I have spent so many hours studying it all. I've discovered what makes them successful, what mistakes they could have avoided, how did they turn their ideas into a successful business, and what are the strategies that they have used to make more sales and be discovered by more customers. And this is what this show is all about. Whether you're just starting out or you're looking to become a million dollar product boss, I'm here to give you the permission to chase your dreams, no matter how big or small. All you need is the right mindset, a little courage, strategy, and support, and you too can be the next million dollar product boss. Let's do this. Hey, hey, friend, welcome back to another coaching session for you today. I love that you are loving these sessions. I get so many messages or I read your reviews on the podcast where you're like, um, Jacqueline, you could have been speaking directly to me. Um, somebody once said that one of the people I was coaching, she's like, I had the same name. So I was like, you were talking to me. And I was like, that's amazing. So if you're loving these episodes and I am loving your feedback, um, would you mind doing me a favor and jumping over and following the show for one? So you make sure that you're getting the two episodes a week that we are dropping. Um, so you want to make sure that those are landing on your phone and ready for you to listen to you. And if you wouldn't mind while you're following the show, leaving a review for the podcast, I read every single one. They're amazing. And it makes me know that I'm on the right track. Okay. So today I'm chatting with Brianne of Texas court company who runs her business with her mom and she sells a wide variety. Actually her mom's Susan. So shout out to Susan. Okay. We got to give Susan some credit here, but she sells a wide variety of cork made products and accessories. Brianne has mostly been selling at in-person markets, but her sales and percentages are down. So she's wondering how she can get more eyes on her business and make more sales, which is exactly what we're going to figure out today. So let's dive in. Hey friend. Okay. In case you missed it, HubSpot's inbound conference is happening in Boston from September 18th to the 20th, and you do not want to miss it. And let me tell you why. Okay. I'm so excited for the speaker lineup. Let me tell you who I will be sharing the stage with. I mean, not at the same time, but maybe hopefully at the same time, who even knows? Okay. Ryan Reynolds and Serena Williams will be sharing their journeys and their paths to success with their businesses. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is a genius marketer. Okay. And I cannot wait to hear what he has to say in his keynote. And I'm just excited and amazed to be sharing my knowledge and discussing social content strategies that will help you create content to sell your products. I mean, there's just going to be so much goodness and it's all going to be about marketing and so many other things. And it's going to be amazing. And that's why you want to be there. Cause when you come join and this is how I feel the conferences, you're going to leave and feel educated. You're going to feel inspired. You're going to feel re-energized and you're going to have networked and connected with so many other incredible business owners. It's just going to be amazing. I can't wait to see you there. Visit inbound.com to see the lineup and grab your tickets today. Brianne, I'm so excited to jump into our coaching call today and dig into your business and get it all answered. So before we kind of like get into the questions, tell me a little bit about your business. What do you make? Where do you sell? So we are Texas Court Company. That's um, I run it with my mom. Uh, she's my primary business partner, um, but we're a family based business and we make basically a wide variety of products made with cork. So we primarily are going to sell things that are made with cork fabrics like uh, purses, wallets, hats, belts, that kind of thing. Um, but then we do also have some home goods that are made with like recycled uh, wine corks and that kind of thing, um, as well. Right now we have an online store. Um, we do sell a little bit of wholesale, but for the most part, it's like w easily 90% of our revenue is coming from, uh, markets that we do all over the state of Texas. Okay. So you're mainly, okay. So you're doing in-person markets and then tell me what your best sellers are. So let's see our, 
Our best sellers by just from a revenue perspective are our chest bags um, and and a couple of different styles of crossbody. In terms of the sheer volume of like number of units sold, it's going to be a, our smaller items. So like our card wallets and our sunglasses are, are also um, we move a lot of sunglasses as well. OK, so I love that. And then so you said in, in terms of volume, but from bestseller, because the price point is higher. Do you what do you think you're known for? What do your customers know you for? So I think it's interesting, you know, cork is sort of so niche that they call us the cork ladies. Um, and so I think just in terms of material, we're definitely known for that. But then um, the ones that have shopped with us I'm going to just say many times, it's actually our notebooks. Um, so we, that's one of the products that we manufacture ourselves, um, where we actually manufacture refillable notebooks in a variety of different sizes and we custom make them and there's all these different colors and they can be painted or embroidered or, um, laser engraved, all kinds of different things. So, um, we, they're not one of our best sellers in terms of just sheer volume, um, but they are definitely something that, that people come to the booth looking for. Okay. Um, cause it sounds like because you're selling in person, it sounds like people, it's easier for somebody to walk away with a smaller type product, right? Like if they like it, they kind of just buy something smaller versus when you buy a bag, it's sort of a bigger consideration. Would that be accurate? Yeah. And I think that that's something that we, we tend to find that, um, and, and that's one of the, my big questions for today is kind of make, education is a really big piece to what we do. Um, my background is actually in science and in education. Um, and so we bring a lot of props with us. Most of the people we interact with don't even know that cork comes from a tree. So it's, there's a lot of sort of just like telling people what, what cork is and just explaining the material and the properties of the material. And then there's a lot of kind of misconceptions even with like when you, a lot of people just think about wine corks, right? Well, what's crazy. You're saying that. And I was like, yeah, cork comes from wine corks. They must smash them down. <laughs> well, and they, I mean, you can do that and we do, we <laughs> recycle corks. Right. But like, but a lot of people don't, they just don't understand anything about like the actual material. And, and a lot of people think it's really new, even though this concept is not new, it's just relatively new in the United States, right? Over in the Mediterranean, they've been doing it for decades upon decades, right? And so a cork purse or a cork wallet is not a new idea, but we have to try to educate our customer base about the product. And so we find that a lot of our customers want to start with something kind of small because they want to just try it out. And then like a re when they come back the next time they see us, they might go ahead and do the bag. What is the education process that I need to know when I'm looking at accessories? Cause wouldn't it be sort of the idea of like, Oh, these are made out of cork and I like the style. Like what's why, why do they need to be so educated? So I think the biggest thing is because there's often a, a misconception about cork that it's very fragile or very brittle. And so like people think about when you put a corkscrew into a cork and you can kind of sometimes get like it breaks apart. So there's a, a belief that it might not be durable. And so the biggest thing that we have to talk to people about is the durability and kind of helping them understand um, that the products should last. So, okay. So that makes sense. So what we're, so what it is here is that it's, it's more of a pre preconceived notion of the material that they're unaware of. So they might look at it and say it's cool, but then maybe apprehension or something that gets in the way of them buying is the idea of like, it's not going to last because of whatever other cork I've interacted with. Yep. Okay. Yep. I think that there's, I know, I know you're like, there's an education process, but I bet that there's ways that we can just like from a marketing perspective, label package, just have something on it. That's like durable to last or, you know, like where you don't have to spend as much time explaining, but there is like an education component to it. So, okay. I like this. So let's get into where you're at. So you said that you're profitable and you're seeing fantastic growth in some key areas um, that you chose to focus on this year. So, um, and then let's see, you're doing, you're doing really well. Like you're, you've got, you know, great months that you're having your good goal for this year is to try and get to a hundred thousand dollars. 
Yeah, we're so last year we we just barely missed it. Um, that was our goal for last year. For this year, our goal was really to try to. Um, I, I, I was telling you earlier, I have twins that are four years old. So for me, um, the amount of time that I can really like going to all of these markets is kind of a challenge for me, just being away that often and things like that. And so, um, you know, my goal was really to try. You know, if I was just going to maintain, was to try to get the revenue to kind of shift where where it was coming from where we could get away with doing fewer markets and hopefully drive more of our revenue from like wholesale or other other sales channels online that kind of thing okay so let's get into your first question so your first question is really you know asking about how to get more visibility and I know you have these two concerns like historical concerns but how let's dig into visibility for you what are you doing now to get it is it just that you're showing up in person so we do we we do all the in per, in person markets. So I would say that's probably our our biggest thing. Um, but then I I try to be pretty active on on both social media, uh, well with Facebook and Instagram. Um, I've just recently gotten signed up on on Pinterest, but that's I ha, yeah have barely even gotten started on that. Um, and then I'm I'm trying to do um, a lot more email marketing, but that's all with existing customers. So and most of those people have signed up with us at a market, and so I've had the opportunity to talk to them, um, and and so they I've kind of already cross that education threshold with them. Um, and so we're just finding like, if we look at our SEO and things like that, and you just kind of look at some of that backend stuff, we're just finding that like a cork purse or something like that is not a super common search term. Um, and so we're just struggling to kind of really understand, like if we're just not using the right keywords, if we're not. And so that's kind of where we're, we're kind of at, we're kind of stuck there, right? Like, do we need to do paid at, paid marketing. Um, cause we really haven't done a whole lot there. We've, you know, we've done, um, a lot of organic stuff, but, but very little, uh, attempts at paid marketing. So you're in multi-stream machine, right? Yeah. So what are you doing? What are the other sales channels you tried to add on? What are you attempting to do there? So let's see, we have, um, I actually literally just got approved. Uh, my shop got approved to be on fair today. So I've just created that to try to make it easier to work with wholesale customers. So I do have a couple of wholesale accounts, not a ton I'm working on. I've kind of developing a list of businesses that I might want to reach out to and, and kind of go that route that we talked about, um, or well, that the modules and MSM talked about, I'm looking into possibly joining some of the wholesale markets to go that way. I'm going down the road of at least looking into. Um, I have not watched the all the modules on Amazon yet, but it's something that I um, am considering. But right now, it's pretty much just um, online. Technically, we have the ability to sell on social media. Uh, like we have the Facebook and Instagram shops, but they just don't do anything for us. Okay. So I think that, I mean, looking at your followers, like you're still under a thousand followers. So let's just take Instagram and Facebook off the table. You're there, you have a presence, but let's not make it the thing. I think what you said, which is funny that today you got to prove for fair, that is actually the direction I would tell you to go. You're in a very similar situation as I was with Cuffs Couture. So with Cuffs, nobody was looking up like wrist wallets were going out with your friends. Like, I don't even know if they were looking at wrist, like people, you know, maybe if you were a runner and you're looking for a way to keep something like out of your pockets, but it wasn't really a searchable term. So I really had to find visibility. And what I did was I did in persons exactly what you're doing. So I got foot traffic, people discovered me. It was time for time. I was building my email list when I was there. And then I was contacting them outside of, you know, they pass by and once they're gone, they're gone. So we need to capture them. The second thing that I did was I added on wholesale. And by adding on wholesale, I just had to build relationships with buyers because it's the same concept. Think about it. We know that your stuff converts in person at markets. So imagine now your purses are hanging, your journals are in a store. Same idea. There's foot traffic. People are walking by. They don't need, they don't need to be searching cork for SEO. Right. Cause there's lots of things. Like think about when we go to stores, like I always think about those kitchen stores that you find when you're at like vacation spots and there's all those random things in there for your kitchen or like a great gift store. And you're like, I would, you would have never looked for it, but it's that idea of like discovering the product and in the moment, which is the way we all used to shop. Right. We didn't used to search for things. We had the yellow pages and then we had to go to stores. <laughs> 
So I do think that for you from a visibility and growth standpoint would be wholesale that I think where I think you're on track. Now, you know, in multi-stream machine, I teach that fair can be a tool, but it's not your end all be all. So I'm glad that you got approved to be on there and you can use it as a point that they can check out there. But then also the strategy inside of the program, like inside of MSM, I teach you how to like find them, what to say to them. You have the templates for line sheets and like the whole follow through of it. So I think that that is kind of a sign for you that that's how you're going to grow visibility and revenue. So would you recommend going like really down the sustainability road? Because that's something that we're finding is is a little strange with the customers. And maybe it's because so many of our shows, I mean, all of our shows have been in Texas, right? And so there's it, the climate here is it's so we, we find with our customers can be a little bit mixed, right? Some people care a lot and really are interested in the cork for that reason. Um, but then other people, it's they only care that it's unique, right? Like the, the kind of value stuff part doesn't, doesn't matter as much to them. Um, and then maybe this comes back down to the question of like seeing this disconnect between who's actually buying and who seems to sometimes be actually using the product um, and, and wondering how we get to be able to speak to more of the people who are actually using it, right? Because a lot of times we're seeing that the buyer is, is actually the, buying it for gifts, the person who's actually spending the money with us. Yeah. I think that where you're at now is sort of what I started teaching in Standout Society because you've got the product. We know the product sells. You're making it. You, you've got this idea of multiple streams of revenue. But I think with Standout Society, the concept there was what you've done is you've come up with this great idea. You've ideated it. You've started to sell it but you made it and sold it, but you skipped over the like understanding of brand, brand story. You're a very good writer. Cause even your intake form, like you're so cute. You're like long story alert. And then you get into it. Like you're, you're really good at writing. So I think that, I think that, and also speaking. So I think that there's a part here that like we can get into, but what, what I'm seeing the biggest gap for you right now is actually you haven't nailed your ideal customer and you haven't nailed your niche. So while it's really easy to just show up in Texas to a market and sell to whoever's walking around, we're still not, you're making a lot of products. And while you said they're accessory, I think when I landed on your site, it was accessories for women, but then it scrolls to accents for the home. And then it goes to products for men. And then there's, then there's journals and like home goods. You're too small of a company to be spreading your stuff everywhere. It's too hard to stand out um, when you're just making a whole bunch of things. And while I know the journals are there, I don't know if the journals are the thing, right? They might work as like a quick pickup, like when you're at a market, but then, you know, I think what's really cool, your cork sunglasses, your cork case. Uh, even with the color and the cork, I think that's really cool. And that has like this kind of bright, fun color. And then there's like a guy that's wearing your cork hat and he almost looks like a guy who'd be boating or at the beaches. Like, so I think what we have to do is we have to hone in on who your ideal customer is. It could be a woman and a man, for example. Um, if you're going to do both men, do you sell a lot of men's? Not a lot. We, we, there's a fair number of products that like the sunglasses that are relatively unisex. And so we will sell to, uh, those to both men and women. Um, but we, and we do carry, we sell a lot more men's stuff around the holidays because for gifts and things like that. Um, so we do sell a few things, uh, for men, but not, um, they tend to be this, the products that are just sort of unisex in terms of like, they're just kind of a plain color. Um, and then for women, what do they buy more of? Like, what's the, what's the stuff that really makes the money for your biz? It's definitely going to be like kind of those, uh, like the chest bags, uh, like the one I have here. And then, uh, the, the kind of crossover slings that are pretty trendy right now. And then just like the really simple card wallets, we sell a lot of them. Okay. Yeah. So I, you know, when I look at your stuff, I'm not saying that it's Brighton. Do you know the brand Brighton? So there, there is a level of it being, um, I'm going to say this and I'm in my forties, so I'm not calling me old, but like an older customer in the way of the, the product. So it's probably someone who is depending what 50 plus. So you said, yeah. So I think there's someone who might be having they're either their kids are out of the house or they're becoming young grandparents, or they're kind of in that in, in fashion, we call it Missy. So there's contemporary and then um, there's Missy. So Missy is just kind of like the concept of like White House Black Market, like that customer. And so there are parts here, there are products that, you know, I think the hat, the 
cork sunglasses. I think like you said, they're giftable. So there, it might even be, it's something that I feel like my mother-in-law would buy me because she saw it at a market and she thought it was cool. And she knows I'm into design and fashion. And she'd be like, you like this because it's interesting. So I think like you said, from a gifting perspective, people would like it from a gifting perspective. Um, and then, but I do think the style, the design, the styles, the prints are of that like Missy customer base. So look up Brighton. Um, White House Black Market tried to skew younger. They're still, um, they're still technically Missy because the way that like they have things with sleeves, right? Because your arms get a little jigglier as you get older, like heels aren't pointy. They're like more comfortable heels. So they're just like for more practical people. And that age can change depending on who you are and how you function. And also I'm not saying that 20 year olds and 30 year olds and 40 year olds wouldn't like this, but we want to kind of know because then when you, if you do have models or you're thinking about style design print, you're just, you're going for something that your stuff is less trendy. Your prints are less trendy. Yeah. 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 No, I a hundred percent agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, and honestly, I think that that is something that for us, I don't know that, that that's necessarily what we've been aiming for to be trendy. I mean, I think definitely like in terms of myself and my mom, like we, we are the very like practical person, you know, like I, and, and our customers tend to really prefer, um, you know, like they want all the pockets in their bags and things like that. Like they, they really care about how it's, how it's going to be useful to them in terms of carrying all their stuff. And they don't seem to care as much about the look of it, but I've gotten that yep. feedback before that, the, that it doesn't seem like it's as young. Your stuff is practical. Your stuff is interesting and it's different and unique, which is why it can easily be something that's like, like your glasses. I feel like your glasses and your glass cases, you can probably sell like all over the place, like even to surf shops and hotels, um, even, even your bags. But I think what I want you to do is right now, maybe you go back into being a woman's accessories company. You could have like a unisex tab. So certain things that can be unisex if I'm looking, but I want you and you can, and, and I could be totally wrong. So you go back and look at your numbers and I want you to look at your, go back to your numbers and say like, okay, let's really look at what I sold from women's, how many bags versus other accessories. Let's look at what I sold from men's. Cause we might be surprised and say like, actually men's maybe out of your hundred thousand, 30,000 was from men's that's 30%. Maybe we don't get rid of it. Or if you're like home goods, gift type products, accessories, those do really well. So maybe though, you just want to look at it in percentage. So let's say we have a hundred percent, like it's a pie. Um, maybe, you know, it's 50% of that pie is like women's handbags and wallets in cards. Right. And then you'll divide up that pie with like how many bags to wallets and whatever. And then maybe, you know, 25% of it is like sunglasses and cases, maybe 15% is men's. 15%, I don't know if I'm past hundred, but like 15% is jewelry, right? So if you can start to slice this pie in that way, because you have this historical data, then you know not to get excited or make a whole bunch of stuff. Like you get excited about men's, you're like, I'm going to make all this stuff. But it's like, hold on, only 15% needs to be men. So am I at that yet? Right. I, yeah, I definitely, that was something that when we were, when I was going through SOS, um, and, and really I, I got so stuck on that niche thing and it, and I, you know, I, it was something that we talked about in the community and because the material is so niche, I really have struggled to understand for my, for our company, like, because the material is so niche, do we need to have this breadth in the products available or do we need to be niche in terms of the number of the number of different types of products and in the material, right? Like, and so that's definitely something that, and so it's, it's kind of sounding to me, like you're saying, um, narrow down, right. And, and kind of really focus in on those both best sellers that like you always say, right. Like focus on the best sellers, but then if I'm understanding correctly, like then you would just say, you know, like if I was going to try to do product drops or things like that, it would be just changing, like slight changes, like changes to colors seasonally or, or changes, you know, slight changes to the, the shape of the frames or something like that on the sunglasses. Is that yeah. kind of my understanding? Like, yeah. So for example, your bright colored cork with like the speckles of really bright colors in it, that's not going to do as well in the fall. But if you're like this crushed it in the summer, I'm going to come out with like a 
more neutral or fall color or whatever, right? Then you know, like you're just doing variations on something, but it's not always. The other part is, is like, I think, yes, identifying your ideal customer. I think you're stuck in the cork conversation because of the material you're using and the questions that you're getting. Even the bag behind you, it's like really interesting. And so that bag can come out. I don't know if you make it in your black cork, but I've never seen black cork. And it, I saw you have like a black cork wallet. It's that's cool. Like that's like cool and sophisticated and looks different. So it's like, all right, if you know that your sling bag is crushing it, then do another variation on it. And then let's say in the summer, you do the bright color speckled one, you know? So something that I find really interesting that you mentioned the black cork, um, we've, we've tried introducing the solid colors and, and, um, one, and they actually don't sell well for us and, and at least not at the markets. And I think one of the things that the only kind of, I'm going to just say direct feedback we've gotten is a lot of people, their initial reaction is they think it looks like leather. Right. And so they, they like, they like that, but it doesn't like the thing that they think is so unique about it is that it's made from cork. And so it, it's just kind of this weird. Well, I'm not know. your ideal customer, right? So I'm in LA, yeah. I'm fashion. I'm wearing like this crazy outfit right now that you're looking me in with like crazy sleeves. Right. So I might be like, Oh, that's cool. Because I actually might not wear the cork it is no offense to you. I'm just not your ideal customer, but there's products in your stuff that I'm like, Oh, that's cool too. Right. So I saw the black. I thought that was cool, but that's okay. So if, so pay attention, like if they like the print that you're doing on things, that's really interesting. What I do think you can drop are like your cork placemats, your coasters, um, your wine bottle openers. You're, you're more of a gift shop right now, but you have too many products. Yeah. Okay. And so on those like re remaining inventory, we just use some of this, the same strategies we've talked about before to just kind of clear what I have. And then it, like in terms of the actual process of phasing down to the, to the niching down, you just kind of phase out those, those yeah. products. Yeah. So I would start any sort of new direction you go, any new product you're making, any marketing campaigns, you could really think about them in the, the, since you're in standout society too, like the direction of, all right, if this is my niche, your people are probably more on Facebook than Instagram. And then thinking about accessories that would fit her. We're going to go with her more so. And then all this other stuff, you can really push it out. Like if you really create content around gifting, gift bundles, whatever, do what you can with what you have right now. Put your coffee mugs and your cork tea. Like when we, it's Christmas in July. I know it's so hot in Texas, but like you can do like Christmas in July. Like you can do your own like promotions where you want to move it. You can start to like highlight it for people. And then you can, maybe you'll wrap up the rest of the year with getting rid of it, but I don't want you to make any more. So then would you try like in terms of marketing? I mean, so, and this is where, I, you know, one of the things that because our, our current customer customer base is definitely in that kind of missy category, um, practical minded, um, budget minded, all of those kinds of things. Like, w do we just kind of commit to that and say like this, this is the customer that buys from us and we just market to them. Or is it something that like, do we continue to, to market the that, like kind of your sustainability values, your, your, you know, some of that kind of stuff. And, and that as the person who does most of the marketing, I get kind of I struggle so with that. Balance. She's going to like the idea that one, so she's going to, so this is for everybody. We're all, especially in year like this year, where like there's wars, there's a presidential election, you know, there's been all this talk about inflation forever and things are expensive, whatever. They're still going to buy the thing that they like the most. They're not going to buy stuff anymore from a, they're not going to spend more money because it's sustainable unless it's truthfully like in their like hearts and souls. And that's how they're choosing to live their life. The general consumer is just going to feel better about themselves knowing that, but it's not going to be the reason they buy from you. Because if it was the reason they buy from you, then they probably are also are not in consumption mode. They're buying only vintage clothes and secondhand, right? There's like, you can get into all the nuances and all of it. So your stuff, the first reason people are going to buy it is because they're attracted to it. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's cool. Right. So the sling bag behind you, it's like, it's a cool color. Oh, wow. It's made out of cork. And I like the shape of it. That's awesome. Right. So I'm first going to like that. The secondary part will be like, it's made out of sustainable materials. It's made out of cork and it's, um, and you might just need to reinforce the brand messaging with like, it's durable, um, long lasting, um, supple, doesn't break. Like not, it's not your, 
it's not your wine bottle cork. You might even do that as like a tagline. Um, you know, customers love these. And then like you use, you know, so that's like the secondary part. So in your marketing, they're going to, they, I'll guarantee they walk up there because it's first a visual thing. They look at it and they're like, Oh, what's that? Well, that's cool. Right. Their first interested visual. So by you coming at them and being like, it's sustainable and it's made from this and da, 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 like, they're like, hold on. I didn't need that information. I just wanted to take a second and look at this stuff first. And you're like, oh, that's so cute with your outfit. Like, it's so, you know, my customers love this bag. Like my customer's going to Japan and she's taking it with her and it's super lightweight and water resistant or whatever it is. And, um, and like, and then she's taking it and traveling with it. Oh, that's such a great idea. I'm going on a trip. That's the marketing I want you to connect for them. Okay. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cause my, my woman is definitely a well-traveled woman. Um, they, she does a lot of, tra- a lot of international, which travel. is why she appreciates the difference in your product. And the other thing I wanted to say is that look, you selling to like that customer because she actually has money when we're older, we have technically, we should have more money, right? Like baby boomers or boomers as the kids call them and everything like that. Right. They, they've worked their lives to now enjoy them. So if she's traveling, she's got money to travel. So she's also got money to, to spend on things that she really loves. Now she's not buying, she's not in disposable product, like what's the latest trend. She's buying stuff she loves and that she's going to use and she's willing to pay for it. Did you catch that? All right. So Brienne has made this incredible product. I mean, it's really cool, but she's actually skipped over some of these core foundational steps of nailing her ideal customer and nailing her niche, right? It seems like she is trying to sell everything to everyone with really cool products, by the way, if I didn't say that already. So you don't need to make a lot of products to sell more, but you do need to be making the correct products because As the saying goes, if you're known for everything, you're actually known for nothing. So luckily for Brienne, she's inside one of my programs, Standout Society, where we actually dig deep into figuring out your ideal customer avatar and how you nail your niche so that you can get really solid on your brand messaging, sell more products, know exactly who you're selling to and what they want to buy from you without needing to offer more or make more. Sounds like a dream, right? So in terms of other options outside of, of social media, cause you, you definitely, she's definitely more, uh, more on Facebook if she uses social media at all. And that's something that, that we have found is that, um, we get some feedback that our, our ladies just don't use social media at all. I, I've thought about like trying to find magazines, things like that. I mean, I think that the, honestly, I think the best, the best version of this is you just scale the heck out of wholesale. Like you could be making, so, we can add another $100,000 to your business this year just on wholesale, right? That's 8,000 a month. Uh, we have half the year, like 16,000 a month. Like, could you do that? When we get closer to that season, you have, you know, cause you, you're in both programs. So multi stream machine talks about minimums. So we sell them a minimum of three bags or four bags or six bags of one style, one color with a minimum opening order. Like there's all these things that we kind of teach in there. And So imagine now you're getting $800, $1,000, $1,200 orders from stores. How many do we need of those? We work backwards and we're like, okay, great. I just got to go out and get them. So I think that she's going to discover you. I think I want you to get really creative on the kinds of stores you sell to you. So I typically coach my clients. I talk to them about the dream 100. So I did this with my husband the other day because he teaches voice. He's a Broadway actor. And I was like, hey, let's think about 100 people you could reach out to, to let people know that you are teaching voice. So for you, I would, I would first start with getting like really creative and like, just do a brainstorm of like, what kinds of stores could I sell to? You could sell to hotel gift shops. You could sell at airports. You could sell at regular like gift stores and touristy neighborhoods. And then think about all the types of boutiques that you could sell to, right? Like fashion boutiques, gift boutiques, stationary, you know, there's all sorts of places that you're going to see your stuff. Um, men's sort of thing, right? Surf shops, tanning salons, people love <laughs> buy sunglasses and hats at tanning salons. Like I used to sell cuffs couture and like my hair accessories and stuff at hair salons. Cause they always have like a little bit of stuff that they sell. So when you get really creative with that, then if you do a dream 100, I don't know, let's say you come up with 10 categories, you come up with five categories, then within those categories, try and list out like 10, 15, 20, you start to research and look up those stores. And for your stuff, 
maybe we do start you with like coastal cities, um, Texas, the Gulf, the cities that you're currently in. I think your stuff could do really well in like the San Diego area or like Northern California. I don't know if it's a Connecticut product, but maybe the Carolinas, lake cities, like around, you know, Michigan, like all that. So then start to get creative and then you use what I teach you inside that program to go find them. And then that's going to be your list to contact. And you'll see out of every hundred people you contact, how many people convert. And then you'll just know like, okay, this is the quantity I have to work in, in order to convert the type of people I want to do. So I think that's where people are going to discover you. And then it's going to be more word of mouth. Now, the secondary part is if you did want to do social and Brian, he has freshwater pearl company. He hasn't been on the podcast yet, but he's in my mastermind. He's in multi stream machine. He's in standard site. He's in everything. He has stores. He actually has stores. So he has a store in Mexico and he's based out of San Diego, but he has a few key influencers and they're fashion over 50 influencers. And so they are on Instagram, they are on Facebook, and they're for women who are sort of into, they're women who are still like up on being on social and then, but they started as bloggers. So people getting newsletters still. So you have to think like, how did we used to do things? Cause those people, it's the same way that like, I'm not on TikTok because my brain was like, all right, <laughs> no room for new things. <laughs> So then let's think like pre Instagram where like people stopped and they're like, Facebook's about as far as I'm going to go. So then you might think, okay, like, or maybe they're back in newsletters where they opted into blogs. They were reading blogs and they had that. So maybe it's a few key influencers that you do research about that are 50 and over that have, they're not like 50 and over. And they're like the trendy, like wearing her bikini at the beach, like looks like she's 30 influencer. It's a woman who's in her fifties and above. That's like, dresses in your product. And then you work with that kind of person and you can eventually get into affiliate. But I don't think that you need to do that right now. I think, I think if you were to go all in on wholesale, you would start to find that people would start to discover you in that way. And then you're still doing what you're doing. And I cannot believe you have two, four, four year old twins and you're doing all these in-persons, but you could probably start to replace some of your in-person with wholesale. And I want you to just consider hiring someone to do your booths yeah. and not you. Yeah. I was worried you were going to say, <laughs> oh, I was worried. <laughs> she was going to ask me to ask for help. <laughs> um, so it's actually my mom. She's going to die if she hears this, but it's actually my mom. She's like so worried about the fact that she doesn't feel like the business is, she does. She like manages all the money stuff. Right. And so she's super worried about the fact that the, that the business doesn't pay me enough in her mind that she's like, okay, well, if the business isn't paying you enough then we can't afford to hire somebody else to help with the booths. Right. And I'm like, yeah, but, and I always like, I always say this. I'm like, yeah, but Jacqueline says <laughs> that if you <laughs> hire somebody, it should make your business money, not cost you money. Right. What's your mom's name? Susan. Susan. I'm sorry. That's my mother-in-law's name. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Susan, don't get mad. So yes. And okay. I want you to get paid, Yeah. but if you're feeling like you can't possibly find the time to do all the things that we're talking about here and executing, then you're going to kind of stay stagnant. So what would it look like if on a, let's just imagine this imaginary world, your kids are still young, right? So they're home, but when they're school age, like weekends are the time we have with our kids. So imagine if, and you're in Texas, so hourly is way cheaper than here in LA. I don't know what minimum wage is, but let's say you pay someone $15 an hour and they go do, how long are you at these shows for? Um, usually a minimum of, of, two full days. So it's like a nine to five and then like 10 to four. That's usually the kind of bare minimum. It's like 16 hours. Yeah. Okay. So 16 times, um, I'll just pay him 15 bucks. So it's going to cost you $240 to have someone run your booth. How much do you make in a weekend over those two days? The revenue is typically around, it depends on the show, um, and the time of year, but I'm just going to say probably $2,000, $2,000, um, to somewhere. I think our best one so far has been just under 10. Okay. That's amazing. So, so it's a pretty big range. If worst is $2,000, then you're, you're only losing $240 out of that 2000 because imagine this world. What if, if you still wanted to do this and make more money, one person had a booth over here 
and then you were at another market and now you're making 2000 from both markets and it's only costing you $240 and also pay yourself $15 an hour at least. Right. So you can start to see like your efforts get multiplied. But I just say that because even if it's once a month, what what your mom is saying is, Susan, you're correct. But also there's the stress of you have twins. They're toddlers. (laughs) At least they're not three anymore. But at least they are not three anymore. They are not three nagers anymore. Nobody tells you about three. And then you get three year olds. You're like, what has actually happened? It's crazy. It was a lot. I know, and you had double. So the thing is, is like for your own well-being, like even if you get to sleep in or go for a massage and someone else watches your, your mom watches your kids, you will get a massage and someone else is making you two thousand dollars and you're paying them two hundred forty dollars. I'm like, I would pay that all day, every day. So if you can do that, it's just starting to test it, right? Just release it. Or let's say you have one person work one of the days and you do the other day. But it it will take training where you, you're going to do the shows, you're going to train them, then you're going to like step back a little and watch them do it. But Valerie Brennan of Brennan Candle Co. this last year, she had other people running her in-person events. And then she focused on wholesale and direct to consumer. And now you're able to multiply because you're able to work on like these bigger moves versus the like time for time situation that you're dealing with because it is what it is. Like I always say, if you aren't on social media or social media just isn't the thing for you, you actually don't need it to grow your business because there are other options. So in Brianne's case, if she wants to increase her sales, what I see as her best path to profit, the lever she can pull that would be the easiest for her right now would be going into wholesale. So based on the type of product and the types of stores she can sell her products to, right? It just makes sense. But she feels like she doesn't have the time to do it all. So let's figure out how we can get her some of her time back. Hey friend. Okay. So it's podcast recommendation time and you're just like me and we love podcasts. So I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite shows right now, which is Imperfect Action hosted by Steph Taylor and brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Now, if you want marketing insights without the fluff, you're going to want to tune in because Steph really dives into the meat and potatoes of marketing. I mean, I loved one of her most recent shows where it was talking all about audience growth and she shares her two part formula so that growing your audience doesn't have to feel so hard. Plus, she even shares how you can fix it and fix your current strategy if you only have one part of the formula and not the other. I mean, she's like, it's two parts, but I'm even going to show you how to do it with one part. This episode is so good and was an absolute game changer in my strategies. And it's filled with real actionable advice from a marketing pro. Listen to Imperfect Action wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, hey, product boss. Okay, so you know that I am on a mission to empower women all over the world to build product-based businesses that give them the security and freedom to build their dream business, which will also lead to the life of their dreams. So I know that I can help you do this by teaching you how to nail the core four foundational pillars of a standout business. And it's going to turn your business into something that feels like it's kind of struggling along or limping along to standing out in a crowded market and getting more customers. So I am so excited to invite you to join my free masterclass, your four-step playbook to stand out in a crowded market and get more customers so that you can grow your business no matter where you sell. In just 90 minutes, I'm going to teach you the core four foundational pieces your business might be missing, how to stop wasting time and money on things that don't work, and what to focus on instead. I mean, these are proven ways to build an audience that buys from you and that tells their friends about you. So what I want to do is I want to unlock what can be blocking you from growing a profitable business and how you can turn it around pretty instantly. All you have to do is come join me inside of this totally free masterclass. Head to theproductboss.com slash standout to get access. Again, that's theproductboss.com slash standout. Now back to the show. 
So I think if you, but I also think that you could probably improve your conversion when you're in person, if they, they walk in and they know what they're getting, right. Or you're putting together gift bundles or there's some sort of like build your own gift bundle. And like you, the more items they pick, the more they get a discount. So it's like pick two items, get 10%, three or like, yeah, two items, you get 10% off three items, you get 15%, four items, you get 20, right. So you can also incentivize in-person things for them to buy more when they're there. Yeah, that's definitely something we've been looking at too, is, is kind of updating the way that we display our products. And we've, we have gotten some feedback, um, that, and I guess this aligns with what you were saying earlier, that it's just too many products, but like, um, we've gotten some feedback that it's just kind of overwhelming, right. That people, they, they think it all looks cool, but then they walk away, right. Like, because they're just too overwhelmed. Yeah. Cause they're like, do I want the glasses? Do I want the hat? Maybe I want the placemats. Like, what do I actually, do I want a mug? Do I want a cork skirt? You know? So I think if I were like walking by and I'm like, Oh, okay. That's a cool. They've got cool women's accessories in there. And I got to choose between bags and wallets or how about this bag and wallet easy, right? Oh, you should add glasses. Those glasses are so cute. You'll look so cute matching, right. Or like hat and glasses. So whether or not you hire, I know I like seeded that in your brain, but that that's how I think I would clean it all up. And I think wholesale, I know you're asking, you're trying to ask me like, well, where should I market? But I think wholesale and building that business. And then you're in person, you're really working on getting their emails and then you're marketing to them. And then the third place would be if you wanted to go down the affiliate route or working with influencers, it's the 50 over like the 50 plus fashion. And then people who have blogs and they're on Facebook and they have a following, they even though most of your customers right now are not on social media, those people do have the customers on social media. So they do have that corner of the internet. So if your stuff resonates with them, then I would do that. And the other thing you could do too, is if you want, you could do collaborations with other people with similar customers. So like Brian, if you're listening, you know, with Freshwater Pearl Co, like he may have a similar customer that you guys could do a giveaway together or, um, you know, it's like a similar customer. So that you can find that in your, in the multi-stream machine group, who else is selling, you know, to women over 50. Does anyone want to do a collab? That would be the other way to reach other customers. I think. Okay. Okay. I think that makes a lot of sense. Do you think the fact that we have that historical, the fact that we didn't start out as Texas court company, do you think that that's hurting us? No, you made a hundred thousand dollars. You're gonna make another hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. okay. Nothing's hurting you. Okay. You're just going to move forward. Okay. All right. So leave it, leave it the way it is. Got it. What did you, did you want to change it to something? No, I think the question is just for us, like, because we, we changed our store name on Shopify, right? There's still like, when you see in your store name, it says like my Shopify. And then it says still dot needle and brush studio. And then like, like slash Texas cork or something. As far as we can tell, we are the only ones that can see that we can't like when we, yeah, I'm on your website. It's TX cork. Okay. And so as long as we, we, we don't think that that's something that should be hurting us. Um, but we were just hoping that somebody like you knew better <laughs> than we do. <laughs> yeah, no, but then, but then, okay. So then if we want to get into SEO, then really from an SEO perspective, you might be getting more into SEO and searching in there, like bags to travel, cross body bags, like, um, boating sunglasses, right? Like it might not be using the word cork. It might be finding SEO words that people are searching for gifts for him. Um, unique gifts for her, right? Like you find those words and that's more of like what people are going to search and then they're going to see your stuff. And if, again, it's the same way of like passing you at a booth. If I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I'll stop. But no, I'm not going to type in cork bags. Yeah. So you until more searchable terms, you're known enough. Yeah. 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 So like, you'll still use cork if you want to use cork in there, but think about what people are really searching for cross body bags, lots of pockets or whatever it is. Again, I don't think, I don't know that that is the place that you have to function right now. I think cleaning up the collection and really like honing on the ideal customer and then, and then knowing that they want to buy it from a fashion unique product and secondary is the other stuff, which is just a shift in your messaging or the way that you feel like you have to position yourself. Oh my goodness. Okay. So helpful. It's funny because you actually said a lot of the same, a lot of the things that we had been kind of thinking, right. Especially I haven't having done SOS, I haven't had time to like fully implement everything, but this is a lot of the things that I had been kind of thinking I was where the direction we were going. Um, but it's just, 
so much clarity still. So thank you. So you said the women actually buying from us are significantly older than our ICA. So I think what's happening for you is like, you're too close to it. So there's the imaginary person. And then there is the person now, as much as she's significantly older than your ICA, we do like to typically find a younger version of us to buy. So, you know, even my grandma, who's going to be 90 is like not looking to look like an old lady still. Like I still take her and she's finding fashionable tops and, you know, she still wants to like in our brains, we're still whoever we were at our, we're all in our prime, but like, you know, that, that time of our life where we're like, fashionable and like in our style. So my grandma doesn't ever want to like look old. She doesn't want to look like her grandma. She just wants to find stuff that fits her, fits her body, fits her taste and is like marked at the point that she, so it's the same way that I said, like Facebook marks a point of like my grandma's still on Facebook. And luckily I repost from Instagram to Facebook so she can see what I'm doing, you know? So it's the same idea with fashion. So we don't need to age her up. So I want you to look at like white house black market at Chico's Chico's is a good one to look at because Chico's has also done like a whole fashion sort of like it's still fashionable and they're still not cheap clothes. The coats are longer. The prints are more timeless, but they're still using bright colors and things like that, that still make her feel beautiful and good. But it's just not like my daughter right now is dressed like anime. Like she's got like ombre lips with blue in the middle and purple on the outside. My mother-in-law walked in and was like, oh, you know, like, like that's not what we're going for, right? That's yeah. what the young people do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 I definitely, I totally hear you. The hiring is going to be a conversation that we'll have to have. But <laughs> I, 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 I had a feeling you were going to say that. Well, it's just, you, you've, I don't want you to burn out and I don't want you to resent your business and I want it to grow. But right now your main revenue stream is in person. So you either find help at home or you find help in work. And I, I know your mom wants you to, to, make more money. So then how about you're like, great, we're going to hire someone to do this. I'm going to pay someone 250 bucks for two days. And I'm going to work on wholesale and I'm going to pay myself a 10% commission from wholesale or something. Right. Cause if you drive your own traffic to check out on fair, you don't pay a commission. If they find you on there, you pay a commission. So what if now you were making five to $8,000 per month on your in-persons and then five to $8,000 wholesale we have so much more money to pay you. So we're going to pay you. You're just going to be putting your efforts in a different place. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely, I, I totally agree. And I think the burnout with go, going to that many markets is, is a real possibility. Inevitable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until those kids go to school and then still, what other question can I help? I think the only kind of final question I have, um, is just a clarification when you, when you're paying people, it like, let's just in this imaginary world, say that I was going to hire somebody to, to do the markets. Um, for us, there's often, you know, like you're traveling it, you know, sometimes we're going six hours away, um, cause it's Texas and it's huge. Right. Um, and then we have, uh, overnight stays in hotels and things like that. So, um, now we would have to do that if it was us or if it was somebody else. Right. But is that something where you would, like the expectation is that we would cover those costs and they're, and, and that they are just sort of an hourly employee, right? Whether you have them as an employee. Yeah. You either have them as an employee or a contractor. Um, a contractor is like 1099 where they're coming in and they're just working. These, they're not working for you every day. They're working these markets, right? So they're your salesperson. Um, if it's an employee and an hourly employee, uh, you might need to talk to someone who's more in like HR or go into the group and ask this question for people to even reach out to Valerie at Running Candle Co. But what I would say is that, for example, my husband's an actor. And so if he gets hired to go do a job, when the offer comes in, it's like, this is how much you're getting paid. Plus you get a stipend, travel and hotel. So the stipend might be like $50 a day for food. You don't have to provide that. But if you're asking them to travel somewhere else, you might be like hotel and, um, cause if they're a contractor, it's just an agreement with them, right? Like an employee might have some different legalities. So you would probably pay for hotel. You would pay for car. If they are driving their own car, you'll pay mileage. 
there, it's like a set mileage amount. It's like, I don't know if it's 34 cents a mile or something like that. If they're driving, what I do and what you would want to do is get insurance. So when they're driving to market, when they're at market, if something happened, you just want to make sure you're covered in like liability insurance. And then I would just talk about the rules there. So yeah, it could cost more, but again, it's like, what are you doing with Right. Your right. Time. It buys, buys more time for me for sure. And I'm, I'm looking at, um, ways to get help at home too. Right. So that we might be able to kind of go at it from both sides, but you know, the other thing I know it's not ideal, but like our family travels a lot for work. And when I went to Nashville, I actually brought, she's my personal, she was my personal assistant, but I brought her and asked her if she could help me with my kids too. So like there were days that I was like, I had in-person masterminds. And so she was with my kids while I was doing that. But then she also made sure that like the work stuff was happening. So, I mean, I know it sounds bougie, but you can eventually travel with nannies if you want, if you want to be there doing it and you want your kids to be with you. So there's just lots of ways to do this. You get to decide how you want to do it, but it's help. Just help is your reoccurring theme. It's like, yeah, you can do it all. And I think you've been through a lot of the hard stuff already with having littles at home, double time and building this business. So you've done an amazing job. And so has your mom, but what got you here is you're going to kind of probably stay here until you have more spaciousness to level up. So what I'm doing here, it's like, you're kind of going to stay a little bit stagnant because you don't have the capacity to do anything else. Yeah. Cause it's, and that was, I, I said that a little bit in the intake form, but basically I was really disappointed because we were actually down about 30%. And, but when you look at these other metrics, we're way up in terms of like our online sales, our, our sales from email marketing, like we're way up in all these kind of other areas that we were trying to target this year. But because we've done 30% fewer shows thus far in the year, we're down, we're still down because all the shows that we've done thus far have been down. I don't know. Everybody's kind of blaming election year. Who knows? Like attendance has been down, down. but yeah. the stuff where we're up isn't compensating for the reduction in the number of shows and the fact that the shows that we've done is down are down. So listen, what got you here? won't get you there. And I cannot say this enough. And this is exactly the case for Brienne. While her and her mom have done an amazing job up until this point, they don't have the space or the capacity to grow any bigger. And that's because their time is being used in other ways. So when you hit this point, this is when you need to consider hiring someone to help you so that you can get some of your time back and some of your space back to be able to grow your business to the next level. Remember, you can't grow if you're getting in your own way and you're not outsourcing some of that work that you don't need to be doing. And I don't think I mentioned this when I was coaching her, but there are a lot of things that we're doing that we can actually just stop doing. So I want you to think to yourself, do I have to do them? Can I delegate them to someone else or can I delete them? So think about that for your own business as well. Okay. So as you're hearing me talk to Brianne about outsourcing and hiring and seeing where she feels stuck, what I wanted to give you is something that I give my students, which is this, this form, this document that you fill out. Okay. And it's one in which you write down all the tasks that you're doing, and then you go through them and you decide, do I need to do this? Can I delegate this? Can I delete it? Can I automate it? Can I outsource it? Okay. So I'm going to give you that as a free download. All you have to do is click the link in the show notes or is go to the productboss.com slash help. And we will get you this form so that you can really start to write out all of the things that you're doing and you can look at them and think, okay, do I need to be doing this? Can I just stop doing this? Or maybe I need to get some help in this spot. Okay. And I hope that this is super helpful. So click the link in the show notes or go to the productboss.com slash help. It's, it's tough. I'm in the same spot with the way of just like, things are just not operating the way they were operating and things are just, they're feeling a little bit harder, but instead of pushing against it and we just think about everything as like a cycle, when it gets harder, it's asking us to level up. It's asking us to try something different than what we've been doing. Because if it always is the same and everything was just easy, where's the growth going to happen? We're just going to keep repeating the process, which I know would be amazing. And my nervous system would really love that, but it's just not life, right? Life, life's in its own way. So with that said, I think it's time to get creative, right? Like what do we need to offer? So Dagny Dover, I talk about them a lot, how they build kits. Um, there's this new, uh, face cream company that I've, 
I don't know how new they are, but I've just discovered them. They sell at Sephora and they're called In Beauty. It's I-N-N. And they actually sell kits online where it's exactly what I just told you. You get a percentage off, you get to build your own bundle. So you get a makeup bag and then you get to add in products. It caps you out at a certain amount of products. And then when I bought it, it was like 30% off if you added the most amount of products. So, cause it was like a promotion that they did. So I had done that, but now it's back down to 20 or 25%. So they're always running this like discount for stacking on more product. So the thing is, is here's the deal. When you, um, a customer coming back, retaining a customer and coming it back to buy from you, they're 60 to 70% more likely to buy from you versus a new customer is between five and 10%. So there's more of a 90 to 95% chance that new customers are not going to buy from you. Okay. Versus like a 70% chance that they will. So working on converting people that have already bought from you, getting them to come back and buy more when they're there and they're ready to buy, getting them to raise their average order value when they're with you. That's how you're going to like, yes, we can be down. Yes, we can have less customers. Yes, sales can be down. But the people who are ready to spend with you, let's get them to spend more when their wallets are out. And then I want you to focus on profitability. So when you get rid of all this other stuff and you're able to like really focus You'll be able to scale in a lot of ways. Your manufacturing prices can go down. Um, So one of our students, she has a coffee shop and she was like, she was flat and she kept feeling like, cause I always talk, I know I talk about double, triple, quadruple, but let's get real here. Um, We're not always able to do that. And so the better option is that even if you stayed flat, you made the same amount that you made last year, can we improve it? profitability, even if it's by percentages, 1.2 point, three point percentages versus like, you know, do we always have to double? No, but if we can get better at our profitability, then, then you have more money in your pocket left over. I remember someone asked me like, what's your goal? I was like $10 million company. And they're like, why? And I was like, so I can make more money. They're like, what if you could have a $5 million company and be taking home 40, 50% of the profit? And I was like, that'd be awesome. Right. More money, more problems, more team, more everything. So I know these are really big numbers, but it's like, I just need to know what I want my take home to be. And then that's what I work towards in terms of profitability. Yep. That, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Cause, um, that was, that was part of our goal as, as well was just to, even if we stayed at the same total revenue was just to try to make that, that revenue be, be more profitable for us this year. I feel like I have so many things now <laughs> between just finishing SOS and then, and then this call, I feel like I have so many things now to, to kind of move forward with. So thank you so much. Do you I, feel overwhelmed I, or you just feel like you've got, you've got the info that you need? Um, I feel a little overwhelmed if I'm just being totally okay. honest, but I think for the most well, let's part, let's break it down. Yeah, no, I, th- I mean, I, I think for me, it's more honestly, like, where am I going to find the time, right? That's, I mean, that's just pretty much always the case for me. It's just like, where am I going to find the time? So I know, like, the kids are starting preschool in the fall. And so that will, it's, it's a part time program. So that will be helpful. Um, Mom and I are working on ways to, I mean, one of the things that I took out of SOS that like, it's, it feels like it should have been common sense to me, but I, for I needed somebody to say it to me was just, like you need to treat your time like it's as valuable of a resource as your money, right? Like if you are spending all these, you know, I, I had put so much time into trying to gain followers on Instagram, for example, right? Like just trying to grow there. And it, and then we did that uh, survey in SOS and it was just like, my people aren't there. Like none of, nobody who responded <laughs> was on Instagram. <laughs> and it was just like, why am I spending all this time when there's no there's no ROI at all. Right. And so, um, I don't want to, I don't want to completely ignore the people who might be on Instagram, but it's just, I, it it gave me permission to kind of like, let that not be as much of a focus for me. Right. And, and so I've made so much more progress since making that shift on trying to do things like wholesale on trying to prepare for the fall, like, and, thinking, I mean, we actually nailed down what our black Friday offer is going to be like in July, (laughs) you know? And so, so for me, like, that's just, so I feel a little overwhelmed, but I, but I feel like I have the tools since going through SOS and since kind of revisiting some of the stuff from MSM and sitting down through all of that. And I feel like I have the tools now to kind of really, I, I find myself asking the question a lot more often, does this time 
have any ROI? And if it does, what is it? <laughs> so I can really identify like what I'm getting out of this hour or whatever. Okay. That's excellent. So I think because it's like a water hose to the face right now of information, you'll go back and listen to this and think through it. And I just want you to think like you can map it out in a 30, 60, 90 day plan, right? So what's immediate, like what needs to happen right now? And what do you have the bandwidth to do? I would say sooner than later, wholesale is a good thing for you to jump into because people will be buying for the holidays. So even if you're like, I just want to get even if you do nothing else and just look up your favorite stores in Texas, you don't have to do the hundred that I said, but let's say your favorite stores in Texas and you reach out to them and you try and book a few new stores. Like it's just these little wins that you can do to like start to practice. You go into a local store and you take in a collection. So that would just be from a timing perspective, you know, they're going to start gearing up to stock the stores. So wholesale is a little bit more timely. And in that you just start to think, well, what am I going to focus on? Even if you got rid of nothing else on your website, so I want you to just think of it in like a 30, 60, 90 plan. What needs to happen now and what what am I going to work on? Like what am I going to accomplish in 60 days? What am I going to accomplish in 90 days? We overestimate what we can do in a year and we underestimate what we can do in three years. So we're like, in one year, I'm going to do this. And it's like, for me, my goal last year for what I wanted to get done this year, I'm like, we're trying, right? But... I might have to knock this down into 2025 of like my, my goals. I mean, I've done a lot this year, but it's still not the end result of what I want because life is life and the world is happening around us. It's happening. Everything's happening. So it's like, great. I've accomplished a lot. So I want you to take a moment and say like, I've accomplished a lot and look at the things I've accomplished. And then let me just set plans and then give myself a project. And when that project is done, do the next thing. Everything's going to feel like it's important. It's not. So just find the gaps. Is it that you want to hire someone so you could jump into this part? Great. And then what can mom do versus what you do, right? Like maybe mom is researching the stores, right? The other thing, the other thing is like, let's say you did hire a part-time employee, not saying you need to or should, or you hired, you could hire a VA in the Philippines to go research stores for you. Like there's so many other ways to, like I said, to problem solve for this and to get resourceful. Um, But I just want you to say like, what do I need to do right now? What's getting in my way of hitting my goals? Is it a time thing? Is it a finance thing? Um, if you're down in sales, but your profit is fine, then you might be like, all right, I'm just going to gear up for the holiday season. So I have to prep right now for everything I need to do for my busy time. So s- slowly step into it and give yourself the grace and patience. And like, it's going to take the time it takes and what needs to be now and what can be later. It's so good. <laughs> Hi. Okay, good. <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> like deep breath out. Yeah, I, I think it's funny. You, you uh, I think it was one of the podcast episodes uh, talked about how I want to say you said it was your operations manager. Somebody on your team tells you that you're only allowed to have three projects at a time and that you are, <laughs> you know, and so and and this is kind of where I find like my, my mom and I are both sort of kind of tend to be these kind of very high achieving, you know, like kind of try to do everything at once. And I've just realized that it it means that like nothing actually gets done. Right. And so because we start a hundred conversations and then like, and then you factor in the twins, right. That are four and, and you just like the constant levels of interruption and like the context switching, right. Is, and so trying to find blocks of time where there's not a lot of context switching is something that I'm like, really forcing myself to prioritize to, to find that time. And so I feel like this, this gives me a lot of really good sort of action items to prioritize those. They're not very many, but I do get some blocks of time. <laughs> so. Well, and that's why I'm not sure if you have, do you have the 90 day roadmap from MSM? Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I know I'm like adding more things for you to watch, but that one maybe is the first step. So you got that as a bonus for like one payment into MSM and most people take us up on that. And so I think maybe start there, but what I think that would be good for you is like really deciding on what the projects you're going to work on. Like you're going to set goals, you're going to have projects and you're going to have tasks and you might watch it with your mom. You might divide and conquer. And then I want you to both think about well, what are our roles in this company? Because right now, if you're all doing, if you're both working on the same things, then we're not getting as much done as we, we could be. And so, so it might be like, Hey mom, like while she's finance, maybe she's like finance, 
and operations. And she's like a little bit more back of house and you're more front of house marketing sales visionary, but we do need to kind of split it up a little bit more so that the business is always being worked on, but you know what you do. She knows what she does. And then you, you time block it. You're like, again, with my husband on the dream 100, I was like, great. You want to reach out to hundred people? How long is it going to take you to find the hundred people? So we gave him 10 days to find the hundred people. So it's 10 people a day. Okay. And then it was another 10 days. So 10 people a day that he would reach out to, right? If you want to go slower, you go slower. If it's like, I want to do five a week and I'm going to do it over the next, I don't know, however many weeks, like you get to choose your timing, just set these like micro goals for yourself that are, are more achievable. And like you said, you're like a high achiever. So you're like, I'm going to do a hundred tomorrow. It's like not possible. Then you feel bad because you're like, I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do. So do the thing you say you're going to do just in a realistic, okay, I'm going to reach out to hundred people, but I'm going to give myself the next 30 days and I'm going to do two a day, right? Now it's easier to do. That math might not math, but it's just <laughs> giving you an example. No, I, I 100% <laughs> understand what you're saying. And I, and I, okay. Definitely think that will be a helpful strategy for me. Okay. So those are the tools. You have everything but the mastermind like you are in. So um, so you have everything that I would be ever tell anybody that they needed in terms of what we offer right now. And you got a coaching session. So I think I think you're in a really good spot to get to the next level with with all of this. And then you also deserve to treat yourself to something. So that would be my ask of you is like, I don't know if you like massages or a night out for dinner or whatever it is, but if you could treat yourself to something, then please do that. Because even if you're not paying yourself and that's the other thing you tell your mom, like, yeah, I might not be paying myself, but you know, once a month I go for a massage and the company helps me pay for that. And then it's like, all right, like, at least you know that that thing is coming. So it makes it worth it. And then you'll level up on the things you spend on because as a mom, you're always going to go for your kids. So, which is, I agree, but then we all deserve something too. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Okay. I'll hold you to that. What do you think you're going to do? What do you, what would you like? I really enjoy getting my nails done. I think that's the thing. Okay. I, I like getting my nails done. So I will do that. All right. I will commit to that. I'd actually need commit to, to that and then s- send me a picture of your nails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You be my nail accountability partner. <laughs> I'll be your nail accountability partner. <laughs> Did you get your manicure? <laughs> All right. Thank you. This is so good. This, I'm so glad that you took a lot of weight. So Brianne and her mom, Susan, have been doing such a good job at growing this business. I mean, it's truly incredible what they're doing with these in-person markets in Texas only, by the way, raising babies to toddlers that are twins. But if they want to keep growing, they're going to need to make some changes, which I know they can definitely do. Now, the main theme here is understanding the importance of needing to nail your niche and your ideal customer, right? Nailing your niche means really being known for something, not spreading yourself too thin and not trying to sell everything to everyone. And once you've done that, you will then be able to figure out your next step where you need to focus and get more people to find your business and increase your sales. While so much information can feel overwhelming and like a water hose to the face, just like I told Brianne, take it one step at a time and create a realistic plan for yourself. You can do this product boss. If anyone wants to shop from you, buy from you, follow you, all the things, how, how can they reach you? Our online store is www.txcork.com. And then you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Texas Cork. Amazing. It's great for gift giving. Thank you so much for sharing this coaching call with everyone as well. Thank you, Jacqueline. Okay, friends. So this was a really cool episode. And what I wanted to do is because I know that Brianna is dealing with this and I want to do this for you as well. I mentioned this earlier is I want to help you find more time, maybe even buy back your time. So I'm going to give you a freebie download. It's the productboss.com slash help, or you can click the link in the show notes. And it is going to be a form that you can fill out to really figure out all the tasks that you're doing. And if you should keep doing them, delete them, delegate them, automate them and so on. So I hope that's helpful. Make sure to grab your download. All right. So I hope that you love this episode. Let me know, leave me a review for the podcast. Make sure to follow the show and I'll talk to you next time. 
Hey, before you go, I want to remind you, and you know this, that I am on a mission to empower women all over the world to build product-based businesses that give them the security and freedom that they desire to build the life of their dreams. So I know I can help you do this by teaching you how to nail the core four foundational pillars of a standout brand. And what I've seen people do is they've gone from coming up with an idea to making a product and jumping to sell it, but they've missed the core four foundations. So I am so excited to invite you to join my totally free masterclass, your four-step playbook to stand out in a crowded market and get more customers so that you can grow the, your business of your dreams, no matter where you sell and no matter what you sell. In just 90 minutes, I'm going to teach you the core four foundational pieces your business might be missing, how you can stop wasting time and money on things that don't work, and how you can focus on things that are going to work instead. I also want to teach you my proven ways to build an audience that buys from you and tells their friends about you. And we're going to dig into what might be blocking you from your growth and your potential and how you can turn it around. And really, my friend, I just want to teach you how you can build a standout brand and get more customers and have more sales. It's going to be amazing. And I cannot wait for you to dive in. So come join me, grab your totally free spot and head to the productboss.com slash standout to get access. Again, head to the productboss.com slash standout to get access.